The proper way to cut a band is as follows. Cut near the bottom on both sides. Now, with your scrap, you don't just want to throw this scrap to the side. At the end of your job, you'll have a big spider web of sharp metal. So what we suggest, grab a paver and go ahead and make this a little more manageable to deal with. Then you can just toss that to the side and at the end of the job, you have a nice clean pile to pick up and throw out. All right, Alan, let's create another reference line. Why don't you grab three pavers? Place them together right about at that point before the edging starts to flare. And we'll create a reference line for our soldier course and bond line into the field where it flares. And take it straight all the way back to the curb. Now let's not snap this line tight to the pavers. Let's give ourselves about a quarter of an inch off of the pavers. When laying pavers, first we need to create the parallel reference line. This is done parallel to the garage slab because the curb is not usually parallel. If you begin laying pavers at the curb, the pavers will meet the garage slab at an angle. This is a focal point, so there should be full pavers parallel to the garage with the cuts down by the curb instead. Okay, let's go ahead and create our parallel reference line. We measure from the garage slab. We've chosen a length of 14 feet because we know this side is 16 feet and it's easier to reach then to our laying surface. Right here. Okay. Okay, I'll go ahead and snap it. When you're dealing with a somewhat larger paver, like a six by nine, like we have here, there's a tool that you can use that will allow you to grip one of these larger pavers with just one hand. In that case, you can actually lay two pavers at the same time instead of one if you were not using the tool. Because this is a tumbled product, we don't have to worry about blending different pallets of pavers together. The blending is already done at the manufacturing plant before they come to us. So that whole step is taken out of what we're doing. This also is a random product. So we have a random distribution of three different sizes. They're already picked out and the ratio is picked out for you by the manufacturer. So again, you don't have to worry about that, except for the fact that you use each of the three pieces equally in the project. So we'll go ahead and start laying our pavers. It's important, especially on a damp day, that you use some kind of hand protection, whether it be tape or gloves, will prevent even the most calloused of hands from getting torn up by the pavers. Now one important thing to, to notice when you are doing a random pattern is you don't want long continuous bond lines. You want to break your bond lines occasionally. On this particular project, we're going to be using a separate paver, different from the field as our soldier course all the way around the project. What we're going to do now is we're going to set one piece in as a guide for our soldier course on this end, another one down at the other end. From this point, we're going to run a chalk line now, and we're going to bring it out a quarter of an inch from the front of our paver, just to allow us a little room, because typically a concrete curb like we're going up against is not going to be dead straight. This chalk line will now function as our cut line and tell us exactly where to cut all of our pavers for our soldier course. We've chosen a concrete paver with contrasting color and size to use as our soldier course around the perimeter of our project. The next thing we need to do is we need to mark the scrap end of our cut. We're just going to do that with a quick mark. No need to take a lot of time with this, just so the person on the saw knows which side is scrap and which isn't. When we start running into really small slivers, such as these two, it's more often than not better to break the pattern and to actually change these shapes out than to cut small slivers like this. They have a tendency to break when we do our final compaction. So what we'll do in this case is we'll pull these two pieces out 
and we'll use a larger paver. And make several adjustments here to get rid of those slivers. Now, when we go ahead and redraw that line, our slivers now are gone. We'll be installing the soldier course next. Always make sure when you're handling a paver that you lay thumb side in. It's much easier to get a nice close fit with your thumb toward the inside rather than your fingers. As you go along, if you see any disrupted sand, smooth it. When handling pavers, it is important to wear gloves or finger tape. The correct way of laying pavers is thumb to the inside, fingers out. When your thumb is to the inside, your fingers, arm, and wrist are more capable of holding the paver into the pattern. When you're ready to set the paver, slowly release pressure from your fingers and the paver will slide into place. Doing this correctly eliminates displacement of the sand and reduces wide joints. If you were to turn your fingers in, not only do you have a better chance of hurting them, but your thumb cannot support the paver and it will drop unevenly into the sand causing disruption, wider joints, and more passes with the compactor. Now we purposely left some space to give us a little wiggle room in our soldier course because again, any poured concrete curb is never going to be truly straight. So we gave us ourselves a little wiggle room and you'll see we have a little bit bigger of a gap here than we do here. If we wouldn't have given ourselves that wiggle room, we would have run into a really difficult time fitting our soldier course in ahead. So what we need to do now is just adjust everything so that it's tight up against our cut line. Now when we look down the line, we should see that it looks a lot straighter. We're going to do one last check to make sure our bond line is straight along this soldier course. This time we're going to do this with the string line. Little trick to make sure that the string line sits above the pavement and doesn't get caught in any ridges that might have occurred is to have it sit on top of a spike. And it looks good. When we have a void like this, it's important that we lock this in at this moment. Otherwise, when final compaction happens, the whole pavement will shake back out until it's tight against the curb and all of our bond lines will go out of alignment. So we'll take a little bit of sand and we'll just start filling those voids. If the void is large between the soldier course and edge restraint or curbing, Use the largest aggregate available on site to start filling the void and then finish with coarse sand. This provides a structural lockup of the void and prevents washout better than just using coarse sand. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to establish a center reference line off of one of our bond lines that we can use to move the pavement forward as we keep laying. So what we'll do is we'll measure from our existing chalk line that we snapped earlier until we get to approximately midway in the project and we just choose a bond line. I have one directly right here which seems to be just about halfway through the project. It's at nine feet and one half inches. I'll make a mark on that bond line. So I remember that that's the one we've chosen. And then we'll go to the top of the project and measure out the same distance. At 9 feet, 1 half inch, use a paver on the sand to mark where to snap the chalk line. And now we'll go ahead and snap the chalk line. Now we have a new reference line in order to advance forward on the driveway. We're going to be building out into the shape of a pyramid, so there will always be two laying faces on the right side and on the left side. The paver runner will keep running pavers and stacks along the laying faces on both sides so that you have one setter working at the top of the pyramid and constantly building both sides all the way down, keeping even on both sides. 
They always want to keep in mind that you're going to start laying from the lowest point on the project so that gravity keeps your pavers tight together. The paver runner is responsible for making sure the pavers are stacked properly and evenly spaced and oriented for the paver setter to maintain an even pyramid and laying phase during installation. We're going to go ahead now and check our bond lines. You want to do this every so often as your laying edge is going farther and farther down your project. You don't want to finish the whole project and then go ahead and check your bond lines because your pavement will be locked in and it will be much more difficult to adjust. So we're going to choose a bond line, pull a string line, and we're going to align our string line with a bond line closer toward the center of our field because the edge bond lines tend to move out because they don't really have anything holding them in place. So we're going to align it with this one right here. Are you good down there? And then I'll go along and we'll see any pavers that do come in contact with that bond line. We'll just double check. When you are adjusting, it's important to stand on the pavers that you don't want to move because the weight of your body will hold it in place while everything in front of you will move. Okay, that looks good. Now we'll continue doing this every three or four feet all the way down until we've completed the project. In this case, we have purposely skewed the lane so we are able to demonstrate how to fix it. What we've begun to notice as we keep our laying face moving forward is our line is starting to branch off from our original bond line. You can see toward the end here we're over a full inch off. You can also tell because of our reference line here we're moving almost a full inch off. So what we're going to do right now is correct for this mistake and stretch the field. The first thing I'll do is I'll pound all of our pavers tight. Using an adjustment bar, I'll move fairly large chunks of the pavement out to meet our original reference line. Now I'll continue to tap everything tight if I notice that the pavement is loosening up. Okay, now what we'll do is we'll check it with a string line again and you should be able to see that it's fixed. Now as you can see, we've adjusted the field and stretched our pavers toward the soldier course. Our bond lines are right back where they should be. In this example, we went a little bit too far. We brought our laying edge a little too far out and we went beyond where we have a foundation behind us. So what we did was, we pulled up the pavers where we went beyond we're going to tap them just so they're snug right now. And then we're going to connect around this obstacle. We never want to bring this face out too far before this connection is made. I'm going to place this paver in the hole right here just to keep the space open so these don't close up as we finish laying the rest of our pavement. Now that we've reached all the way to the garage slab, before we go ahead and make a right angle turn here into this area, we want to start a new pyramid and begin moving out straight into the new area and branching down the sides, much in the same way we did when we were over here.